Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and what you're looking at is XBMC, which is a media center application for Windows, Mac, Linux computers. It's now available for Android. This is a pre-release build. Not everything works perfectly, and it doesn't support all hardware very well. But one thing is uh, this pre-release build does support the MK802, which is a little USB thumb drive-sized computer with an all-winner A10 processor that runs Google Android. And out of the box, this particular build doesn't support mouse input, which means you can't really click and do anything like you normally would when you're using the MK802. You can use the keyboard to navigate a little bit with arrow buttons, but um, since it doesn't support numeric or uh, character input, you can't hit enter, you can't really do much of anything else. But there is something called the XBMC Remote Control, which is available from the Android market, and you can use it to navigate just fine. There's a little bit of tweaking that you need to do and you can find information on how to uh, modify XBMC for Android in order to accept the uh, remote control input at lilliputing.com. But uh, it's really not that hard. It does require having Root Explorer or a similar application though. Uh, so first let's go ahead and take a quick look at a video. This is a um, I believe a standard definition video, and this is sort of where you start to run into problems. While XBMC is perfectly capable of handling photos and um, um, music on the MK802, it doesn't support hardware video acceleration yet, which means that some of your videos are going to have look a little bit choppy. Now you can see here I'm uh, controlling fast forward and rewind and so forth, and that works. But when we actually try to watch it, it looks kind of like a quick slideshow. I've also found that exiting a video sometimes takes a little bit longer than I expected to. Now, the MK802 is capable of handling 720p and 1080p video playback, so theoretically a version of XBMC that's optimized for the uh, uh, graphics core should be able to handle some of those things, but this particular build, not so much. Let's try another one real quick here. I don't know why I keep picking black and white movies, but uh, it does support color. So again, the uh, playback experience is not really ideal, but overall the fact that you can control it with an Android device using XBMC for Android, XBMC Remote for Android, is pretty impressive. There's also support for uh, text entry, you can um, switch to gesture mode, switch to buttons, and quickly access music or images or TV shows if you have them. Or you can just use these buttons again to go back to the main menu, access your system settings and info and so forth. So you can see the user interface again is pretty decent and it supports add-ons, all sorts of interesting things, but uh, it doesn't really do a great job with video playback yet. So again, that's a quick look at XBMC Remote and XBMC for Android running on the MK802. Now if you have a device with a faster processor, um, I found that XBMC runs really well on my HTC One X smartphone for instance, um, and again hopefully we'll see 
uh, newer builds that take advantage of uh, other hardware like the all winner A10 processor with Mali 400 graphics and it could turn the MK802 and other similar devices that sell for less than $100 uh, into powerful media center applications or media center devices for less than 100 bucks. It's pretty impressive. Um, assuming it works. In the meantime, we know that it does work on more powerful hardware. So when you're looking at something like, say, a Google Nexus Q, which has a uh, dual-core TI OMAP processor, that should work. But the Nexus Q sells for $299. Anyways, um, again, just a quick look at XBMC for Android on the MK802. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.